Hello there. Welcome to Briefly Schmaltzy. Today's literary cocktail is inspired by the poem Ozymandias by Percy Shelley. We had a few requests for Ozymandias. A fun little challenge indeed. As always, feel free to follow along. The recipe is down below for you. This one was pretty fun to conceptualize. I immediately thought about like golden empire, golden age, because there's a lot about pride and hubris. The title of the poem, Ozymandias, refers to the Greek term for the pharaoh, Ramses II. So immediately it's like, greatness has been thrust upon you. So we need something uh, luxurious, extravagant, imposing. I think about all the obelisks and like Greek and Egyptian architecture crumbling in the dust. Needless to say, I'm excited. It's a great poem written by a not so great husband. Pro tip, don't marry Percy Shelley. That's not to be confused with Mary Shelley, who Percy Shelley was married to. Look, he'll sleep with your sister, and then everyone will claim that the greatest work of your lifetime was actually his. And that's why we're changing our channel name to Briefly Shelley. Just kidding. Anyhow, shall we make a cocktail? Never could do the Australian accent and I apologize. All right, so the theme you'll probably guess from all of this is just golden. When the peak golden age of Greek or Egyptian society comes to mind, what do you feel? I feel tingly on the inside. I feel like a nap or like eating grapes, just eating a ton of grapes. Eating a ton of grapes on a bed made of grapes. Everything is made of grapes. Okay, anyway, I decided to go with uh, an apple brandy. I think of apples as being this decadent, delicious thing to bite into. I always imagine an emperor eating an apple menacingly on the throne. It's a little bit sinful. All right, we're gonna do two ounces of our apple brandy. I found this really tasty, really sweet honey liqueur. I had to do some digging for it. I found it at a specialty wine shop. But I was thinking about, you know, what else is golden and delicious? Honey from bees! So we're gonna do a half an ounce of that. Then I made a golden raisin and saffron syrup. It's very honey-like in consistency. The syrup is thick with two C's. I feel like the height of luxury requires saffron. It's simultaneously vegetal and floral. And paired with golden raisins, which are more subtle in a syrup, I think it will function as a nice pillar to a cocktail. I'm gonna try a fingy. Mmm, yeah, you could use this in an old fashioned. Really, any cocktail with simple syrup. Just call me Winnie the Pooh, because I'm crazy for honey. I'm gonna do half an ounce of this golden raisin saffron syrup. Look at those legs. We're adding more yellow things to the pot. It's time for half an ounce of lemon juice. It's okay if the cocktail's a little bit sweet right now because we're gonna add a little bit of sparkling substance to the mixture. <laughs> Speaking of substances, I keep forgetting Brian Cranston read this poem for a trailer of Breaking Bad. Mm, the irony was palpable. Well, you know what time it is. It's time to shack it a ass. First, we're gonna pour a little bit of sparkling dry mead into our glass. A friend and I actually made this mead. Shout out to my beekeeping buddy, Brian. I got you, boo. For those of you who haven't had mead, it's a honey wine. But instead of the sugars in the grapes fermenting, it's the sugar in the honey. It's not always as sweet as you might think. My friend and I made this mead with a little bit of pear juice. It turned out quite dry, but very tasty, a little bit tart. If you can't find mead, champagne will work just as well. I just like the added honey quality to layer with the honey liqueur that we added earlier. All right, time to strain. Strain, boy, strain. strain. Look at that. It's so golden delicious. Okay, now for the fun part. I purchased some edible gold leaf. We gotta make this bougie AF, okay? Gold leaf is so, so fragile. I really wanted to stand up kind of like a floating sculpture on the drink itself. But I suppose it won't be too bad if it collapses because that's what the poem is about. Collapsing empires. Mm. Ah! Here we go. Uh, grip it and just place it gently on top. That's not bad. It looks kind of like a weird rock in the desert. That's totally what we were going for. Nice! I'll get an overhead shot of this so y'all can see. But first time for a little taste test. Hmm, that's good. I might want to bump the lemon up a little bit more. It's tasty, a little bit sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. But the honey shines through beautifully. 
a little bit of saffron on the end. You get that kind of savory note in the back of your mouth. The sparkling helps, definitely cuts the sweetness. Overall, I think really nice. Fit for a king or a queen or a non-binary monarch. Woo! He's good. All right, let's go read about Ozymandias. And now for a brief toast to you for joining us here today and for delicious poetry. Ah. <clears throat> Ozymandias by Percy Shelley. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command. Tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things. The hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal these words appear, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Cheers.